Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be a match between Terror and Mini here on Fighting Spirit. Top left hand corner here in the Carbot skin we have the Purple Zerg player, it is Terror. And in the bottom right it is the Teal Protoss player, Mini. This was sent to me by RJB as part of a Terror replay pack. He does not win every single game in this replay pack because that would be insane. Just in case you were wondering. Alright, so purple versus teal here in the Carbot skin. Haven't cast a Carbot cast in a while. That was redundant. So I figured I would do so today. <laughs> so happy and cheerful. Uh, I see the comments about longtime Brood War fans saying, I can't tell which unit is what in engagements in the Carbot skin. I hate it. And I've never had that trouble. So I'm sorry about that, but I don't know. It just comes every once in a while, so I'm going to keep doing it. All right. <laughs> Terror saving up for hatch first play, basically, at this point. Hold on. What is this? That's an overlord. Never mind. It's an overpool. Ta -da -da! Overpool opening here from Terror. Forge expanding. Checking with the probe. All of the bases here on Fighting Spirit, which is a map we've seen enough that it is memorized as it is widely considered the best map in all the history of StarCraft. All of the StarCrafts, all of them, including the aborted StarCraft ghost game that never actually happened because it got stuck in developmental hell and bad things happen when that happens to games. Boy, I am just all over the place today. Let's focus on the game, shall we? So the probe is going to scout the second location where the Zerg player is. Huzzah! Second place is where he happens to be. And the probe comes down and says, mm hmm yes, we're dealing with a not hatch first play. So let's go ahead and make a forge. That should give us enough time to get up a cannon or two, depending on how many lings come out of these eggs when the pool finishes. That's what the probe's job is. We know how this works. Down to a T at this point. Is he actually going to go forge, expand, and then cannon? Looks like he certainly is. He has the resources for it. He's he's waiting. I think he was waiting to see how many drones are, com or lings are coming out. Well, maybe not. That Nexus is on its way, and there are definitely six links popping out of those eggs. So, one, two, three, four. And then the five, six, which is a bit delayed. Interesting. Hmm. I don't think it really matters. There's a cannon up here. He's going to throw a gateway to help with that wall, and the link shouldn't be able to get anything done. Uh, especially considering the Protoss player is hidden from Terror right now. So, Terror is trying to scatter around, trying to figure out where this guy is. This is the problem with early pool plays if you're a Zerg on a four player map, is you have no idea. What is going on? So there's your gateway. There's your cannon. I mean, not you don't know what's going on. You just don't know where your opponent is. Overlord says, well, there's not an expansion here. So unless it's a one base play, there's not one here. Unless it's a one base play, then we are going to head down to the bottom right. Take an educated guess. I guess somebody did come up here to check for that nexus, but no one checked this area. That said, second cannon. Yeah, second cannon coming up. Might be a little bit late. Might want to jump on that one. Man, that cannon placement is so good. I think it can hit the outer edge of that gateway. Oh, look at that. Absolute... Word. Okay, this is... I mean, at this stage, the plan is... Oh, he's just trying to get Lings into Scout, but no, denied. Bye, Mini. Shut that down. Get out of my house. Brought some probes down, blocked the ramp. No scouting for you. All the Zerglings die. No information. That was fantastic. Third base coming up pretty early as the natural is now done from Terror. We've seen Terror be an incredible player. We have also seen Mini be an incredible player. I will not be shocked if either one of these players comes out victorious today. Here for your Monday. I believe this will be posted on Monday. Sometimes I change my mind, so don't hold me to that. Although, you know, if I say today's Monday and it's actually Wednesday and it freaks you out a bit, especially because you're probably under a stay-at-home order and you're not going into work and you're really confused as to what's going on in your life, uh, as to what day it is in particular. Maybe not what's going on in your life. I need to stop. I don't know what's going on today, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. Then maybe you could be confused into thinking today is Monday when it's not actually. Dun, dun, dun. What else? Lair. Zerg player. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Protoss player. Everything is totally cool. Holding with Zealots should be just fine at this stage of the game. As again, there is no sign of a Hydralisk den. There is nothing of the sort. We're just going right to Lair. Right to Spire, worried about that Stargate, because if that Corsair count gets out of control, it is impossible for Zerg players to deal with it. So, just doing the smart thing, Terror is today. 
Making a macro hatch, that is natural. His third is done. There is a probe trying to run around and scout a bit, and the fact that the link doesn't have speed, nor is it on the way, is very interesting. Yeah, he's skipping speed on these Zerglings. They're adorable, but they're slow. They're so cute. I love them so much. You know what is interesting, though? When I get into casting, I just... I don't see the skins anymore. Like, I don't... There's nothing in my brain that's like, this is different from what I normally do. It just is what it is. Does that make any sense? I hope so. Citadel of a Dune. Oh, not actually going Stargate. Whoa. How... Um, you better have some cannons, because there will be Mutalisks out if he knows he didn't go Stargate. This might be a bit of a mind game here for many. Like, you know what the Zerg thinks I'm doing, especially because I kept him from scouting me. He thinks I'm going for, uh, obviously for Corsairs. What I'm going to do instead is a whole bunch of charge lots really fast. I'm going to snipe down his third base. Look at these guys. Look at that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at that positioning. That was so good by those drones. Whole positioning that the Zealots didn't know what to do. And they are completely taken care of. That was hilarious. So they got some shots on the hatchery. That's fine. This really does feel like a really big plus one fast zealot attack into storm. Because, yeah, Scourge are on the way. And there's nothing the Scourge are going to be able to do here. Zealot's trying to keep Terror's attention away from what's going on, right? He's like, hey, just don't try to scout me. Just worry about these zealots crushing all your stuff. They don't have the plus one attack yet, and they don't have the speed either. So there's nothing about this that is necessarily suspicious for Terror. It is kind of weird to send two zealots or a few zealots up like this to try to accomplish what you can. And just force links out of the third player, it's fine. I don't know. If I was Terror, I'd be rushing for Lurkers right now. Lurkers can really help against these zealot attacks. Additionally, having additional sunkins can be really good here too. So, alright, here we go. Zealots moving out. What the maelstrom? More Dark Templar action today. Okay. So he's planning on handing, handling the potential Mutalisks with Maelstrom and Storm, it seems. That'd be my guess. Dark, there you go. Dark Templar in production. For those Dark Archons. Dang, son. This is great. I'm really excited for this game now. I was excited already, but now I'm extra hyped. Extra hyped and excited. Hit that like button for the Dark Archons. Well, that's a regular Archon. But we're gonna get there, I promise. Look at this. Zealots show up at the third. They're nothing. There's nothing here to save it. There are no Sunkins. There's one Hydralisk. That hatchery is gonna go down. These are plus one Zealots. Cha-cha, doing two hits per attack. The hatchery dies, all the Zealots die, but that was a well worth sacrifice for them. Just kidding, three of them escaped because they're slippery that way. And they're even holding the ramp against these Lings. What bosses? These Lings have no upgrades either. Okay, okay. Uh, Dark Templar, where did they go? I saw you making... There they are. There it is. Oh, the moment of a Dark Archon's birth. Well, construction summoning is here. That is a huge loss. See these lurkers? They wanted to be here about 10 minutes ago. Okay, maybe not that long ago. They wanted to be here two minutes ago, and then maybe they could have saved the hatch. It would have been a close thing. But at this stage, yeah, Terror knows. He's like, hey, man, that was not a Stargate opening. You tricked me. I made Corsair for nothing at all. It's true. You did. Guess who has High Templar out? Did he get Storm in all this chaos? I hope he did. Dude, Mini, you're kill This is so good. This is so good. All right, so Lurker's going to show up. Zealot. <laughs> Thinking about hopping out there. Is there an observatory? Is that our first robo? Uh, that's our first robo in construction here. So, nope, no observatory. The lurkers are a little more effective than they otherwise would be. Corsair flies around, tries to see what's what. Does I don't know if he caught a glimpse of that dark Archon or not. So, Archon Zealot coming up to the third base. And there's a single sunken here. Uh, but you know what? An Archon with plus one and a Zealot with plus one is actually not a bad answer to a sunken at all. However, getting surrounded by Lings is bad and he does get taken out after all those hits from the sunken and the Ling response is further pretty good there from Terror. Lurkers take forever to kill buildings. So there's no real rush to get detection, but you're gonna want detection. Okay, now Storm's on the way. 
Where's your? Did you make an observatory? Are you really doing this without observers? I am so confused right now. Maybe he's just going to storm where the lurkers are, but then it takes two storms to take them down. Usually it's like a storm and a dragoon hit, or like a storm and some zealot swipes. All right, so basically he's using Scourge for scouting purposes right now. <laughs> he's like, what is going on? Oh, he gets, that's, that's a scout of that Dark Archon, I think. Fort is working on plus two. Did it finish? Check. It didn't finish. He got plus two. Oh, terror. He sacrificed some links for it, but it was definitely worth it. He took down the shuttle with two high Templar in it. Oh, no, Mini. Oh, no. This was going so well for you, and suddenly it's kind of falling apart. You're losing plus two. Your forge got demolished. The third base is back for terror. Your third base is running, which is nice. I mean, you're up 123 to 92 supply in 10 minutes, which is fairly normal. And... Th th wait, what? Who? Huh? There is an observer. Where's the observatory? Oh, it's down here. Okay, good. He was doing this with observers. Uh, yes, Minnie's not an idiot. We decided. We figured it out. Ah, the mutas are here. The cannon placement is pretty good. But not good enough to save that one. Man, Minnie's just out on the map. This is a really scary place to be for your High Templar because there's lings about. All right, so they have to storm themselves. Oh, two of the High Templar die. Probably save this one, though, maybe. I don't know. The Mutalisks can't really engage here. They don't feel like they can anyway. The lings do have plus one armor. If these were plus two zealots, it'd be so much better. So much better for Minnie here. The Mutas harassing the third base, doing their jobs, honestly. This is what they're here to do is harass... Ling's trying to... Oh my gosh, High Templar down again? Save it! Save the High Templar! No! Not enough to save it. Bunch of Zerglings die, but totally worth it in the long run. Dark Archon. Did he Maelstrom something and I missed it? I have to see the Maelstrom. Cha-cha, cha-cha. You there. Yeah, he did. He There's a Maelstrom Storm combo here, or an attempt. Where is it? All right, so this is all happening. The Zealots don't really want to engage because that's like a hundred Zerglings. The Mutas are harassing. The Mutas continue harassing, doing their jobs, blah, blah, blah. This High Templar dies. This Zergling is here to kill. He did not. Oh, he whiffed! Oh! He whiffed with the Maelstrom! Okay, I saw that, and I didn't know that was what a whiffed Maelstrom looks like in the car box. Huh. Maybe I do have some sympathy for you longtime Rugor players after all. However, Zealots are present. They only have the plus one. They wish to high heaven they had two. Ling's here for the Dragoons. Mutus here for the Zealots. This is pretty well held, I gotta say. Third base was in a bit of trouble, but not so much anymore. Uh, Dark Archon has joined the party. I love how he has a hood. He looks so cool. I will maelstrom you. I will... Okay, we got one. We got... Oh, that does not look nearly as good in the car bot. And the Dark Archon is getting chased down and... Probably massacred. No, the dragoons sacrificing their lives, using their bodies as a shield against the oncoming Zergling swarm with their plus one armor. Soon to be plus one attack. Dragoons fighting Dark Archon at the front lines. He doesn't really want to be here. He does escape down to the south, but yeah, okay. Zealots in the mix. Gonna do better. The links have plus one now. Oh, they don't. Are you kidding? That takes so long. And Dark Archon, 65 energy, getting focused, alive. He is alive. That cannon, these, ugh. this is so good from Terror. He's just got lings all over the Dragoons. He's got mutas on the probes. Some of the mutas are dying here, but Dragoon count, oh, these guys are kind of scary. If they had plus two, they'd be absolutely scarier for sure. The lings are plus one, which is bleh for the Protoss player. What a nuts game this is. All right, so the Dark Archon gets 
obliterated there in the southern section at the third base. This is so many Zerglings today. This is like a man after my own heart. Terror is feeling the power of the Zergling. He's somehow down 89 to 120 supply. Uh, Defilers are out though, so that's exciting stuff. All right, man. Storm is like your saving grace right now. He's gonna try to DT High Templar drop somewhere. Dark Swarm is there, but the Lings, the Zealots are ready to go. The Zealots are standing in. They have their plus two now against these Zerglings. Dark Templar in the mix. There's no detection here from the Zerg. That's really good for many. Dark Templar has six kills already. He's going to need a lot more before all is said and done. Desperation Storm from a High Templar gets wiped out. Mutas eat an entire storm up there. Some probes die, but I'm not sure it really matters. Zealots in the mix. Overlord comes in to scout for the detection that he has heard inside the Dark Swarm here today. Zealots fighting. Archon's trying to get summoned at the same time because they're not a bad answer. Lurkers burrowing in just as the Dark Swarm uh, expires. Are these Lurkers just trying to get... Where are they going? I don't know, but the Zealots should probably be stabbing at them at the moment, however, guys. All right. So they... But... Huh... So no kills on those lurkers, I'm pretty sure. And many holds. Like, that was really scary for him. But he had enough zealots with the upgrades. He had some good storm. He had a DT in the mix. Just barely enough to hang on there. More lings in production. I would honestly stop making Dragoons entirely at this point. There's also four ultras on the way from Terror because he's terrifying. As the kids say, this southern base is in so much trouble. This southern base is in all of the trouble. Yeah, they're going to try to snipe down the Nexus here. Uh, but you know what? Cannon's doing a pretty good job keeping it alive. That was a miscalculation by Terror. There you go. Second Dark Swarm means that the Nexus is... No, the Zealot Party arrived and saved the Nexus. Dude, this game, though... This game is banana pants. It really is. Terror's at 39 drones. I may have missed a Storm Drop over here. Like, Mini may have been able to do a Storm Drop at this base while holding at his front door because he's insane. That would explain maybe why there are so few drones, but that that is all of the Ultralisks. That may be the most Ultras I've seen in one place in a game in a while. All right, well, the High Templar pathing is bad. That High Templar has well, had enough energy for a Storm. Coming up the ramp with Ultras is a bad idea, though, so they do back out. They don't, aren't fully upgraded either. They have plus two attack. They have three armor. They're working on chitinous plating. Lings keep running into this natural and doing stuff, but no, it's not. That's not going to happen at all. Plus one armor is down for the ground stuff. For ah, TT back here doing some stuff. Hmm. Dude, Minnie's up one fifty four to one nineteen supply. He has a supply advantage at seventeen minutes. He's on three bases. The Zerg player is kind of on four. Just. Barely on four bases. Accidental engagement in the middle of the map. I'm not sure anybody knows this is happening until now. The High Templar in the front is not really where you want them. Guys. Alright, so you storm the Ultras just because, I mean, it does damage to them. It's not going to one-shot them or anything magical. Mini is absolutely not interested in standing and fighting here at all. That Archon gets away with two health. Eight. Never mind. He's out. The music is maybe appropriately somber for what's happening here. <laughs> Storm all of the Ultralisk. Zealots standing and fighting. Storm everywhere. Just kidding. The Zealots are not standing and fighting. They're trying to weaken these guys slowly over time. Having them eat Storm and whatnot. This is a pretty good hold. The Zealots are playing 300 as well as they can. The Dark Templar are out. There is detection, however, for the Dark Templar, so they're not just going to run wild on these Ultras. That said, their damage is pretty good versus these guys. Probes are running from this location because there are still, like, six Ultralisks remaining. Uh, maybe five Ultralisks. Are the probes fighting? Never mind. The probes are fighting. Oh my gosh, that Ultralisk got killed by a probe! What is this game even? 
Uh, that Ultra has five kills and does get wiped out in the end, but it's 120 to 113 supply. Probe transfer to this on-fire base is happening, but Terror has no ability to just let Mini out of this. No chill whatsoever. Trying to get an Archon up. Uh, that doesn't happen. Storm didn't help, but Storm didn't necessarily hurt either. So Natural Base is done. It's a graveyard for Mini. He's only down about 10 supply, though. That said, these ultras are pretty darn cost-efficient based on the fact there are no Reavers and no Archons at all. This is the most efficient we've seen ultras in some time on the channel here. What a crazy go-nuts game this is. Jeez. All right. Ling's coming in. I assume they have Adrenal. They have 2-2. Two, two. Storm, again, good answer, though. Ultra sniped. Nice target firing there for Mini. And the Lings don't get up the ramp. That said, we have more stuff happening. Wait, are these just... These are just guys. They're just overlords. That'll... Oh, never mind. This ultra is here. I'm trying to chase away the overlords so Dark Templar can do more work, I have to assume. Yeah, that arc on though. Plus three attack. Boy, so much damage. Why are these overlords here? They're just going to get murdered by the Archons, but it's fine. Uh, Scourge flying into their deaths, too. Cool. I assume they're th oh my gosh, they're there to kill jeez. I assume they're there to kill observers. It's a supply blocked terror at 133 supply. Coming in again. Zealots running into the fourth base of terror though. And actually kind of sort of doing some work down here. There's only a handful of lings. This game, I don't know what else to say about it right now. It's so stupidly close. The zealots get cleaned out mostly thanks to adrenal gland, I'd have to assume. Archon count getting a little bit heavy right now. But the surround is real. If you can surround Ultralisks, you're going to have a good time. Which is why the Archons... Or if you can surround Archons, you're going to have a good time. Which is why they keep moving back. The Dark Swarm hurt a little bit. But I think that Archon was dead anyway. Production tab. Six Zealots. Two High Templar. So many Ultras have died in this game. But I'm not entirely sure how much... Oh, another storm drop down this way. Man, teal is impossible to see on this map. You know that. I know that. Ultra trying to get up the ramp. Haven't successfully done it today. Going to lose another one of their buddies to these plus three zealots. This High Templar do catch 14 kills on that High Templar. And this one going to get a big storm off too. All right. He's clawing his way back into this game. Sheerly through storm drops and zealot production right now. Another ultralisk going to fall to these zealots with their plus three attack. More ultras are down at the bottom of the ramp though. Do you have enough energy for a storm? Do you have an archon you can set up at the top, top of the ramp? I don't know. Northern base is taken by terror, but he's only at 46 drones. He has taken the bottom left one too. I think just by sheer number of bases available, I believe terror has this game, but... Caster cursing it. It's something I don't want to do. Oh, Defiler took the... T oh, did he just consume an Overlord? <laughs> he might have just consumed an Overlord, but another army's here from Terror, and... Oh, my gosh. Are these just regular... Why are you bringing Overlords here? I guess he's worried about DTs ruining his day. He just wants a mass of them, I guess. But Archons holding the line. Don't let them through, boys. Ultralist down. Archons racking up the kills here. DT in the mix, racking up the kills. Terror cannot get through. Terror getting mined out of his third base. Really has no hope of securing a fourth base today. That said, he's only down 12 total supply right now. Dude, if Mini wins this thing, I'm going to fall off my chair. I'm going to do it. This is probably getting an epic tag regardless of what happens because this has been so low econ, so insanely back and forth. So many drones have died. So many probes have died. But I think it comes down to that fact this base was taken early and it is getting mined out quickly. Like, really quickly. Zealot Archon, that is so many Ultralisks. And that's your good game. Yeah, Mini recognized. Ah, uh, no. No, that's not happening. Not versus fully upgraded Ultralisks against my handful of Zealots. Bunch of High Templar here. Most of them, which none of them can do Storm, actually. A couple Archons, which are great. But no, that was not happening.
No way, no how. I could have maybe held the ramp, but out here in the open, I'm going to get surrounded. These ultras are already back behind me, flanking. And that's it. Jeez. So we got Dark Archon play. Not that Dark Archon really did much in this game. It whiffed on a Maelstrom. It did Maelstrom some ultras or some uh, Mutalisks, but then nothing bad happened to them. So uh, it was a complete whiff on the Dark Archon play. But the DTs were better. The Storms were better. The Storm Drops were better. Sniping that third base was a big deal for many, and the Terror was just able to keep powering through. He replaced the base fast, able to take this one down here, took the north base. Once he got into Mass Ling Ultra, it was really hard to handle. You can go Archon Zealot here, but I kind of prefer maybe Reavers in this situation. If you have enough Reavers, the problem is you have to have enough Reavers, and you have to have a Robotics Bay, which I don't think he had, unfortunately. But yeah, like four Reavers, just like boo, 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 splash damage, 100 damage per hit on these Ultras. They is gone. Mass Archon too. Like if you had equal number of Archons to Ultralisks in like equal cost, I think you could do something here. Especially with Zealot support. But at the end of the day, no. Mini not enough. Never able to secure a, a fourth base and it cost him immensely. Hot didgeridoo. All right. Very good. End of the day. 169,000 points for Mini. 180,000 points for Terror. Ended up killing 462 Zerg units, but the problem was that Terra produced 632. He still had 200 running around at the end of the day. Structures raised, both players doing it, but Terra taking down more Protoss structures than he lost on his end, as is usual in Zerg versus Protoss, because Overlords are not structures. And then economy-wise, it's pretty even, which is fairly impressive for Terra to get this win with effectively the same amount of gas mined, minerals mined, and total spent. As his Protoss opponent. I've seen games where this is kind of what the final screen looks like for Evo resources. And the Protoss player wins. Just because his units are usually more cost effective. But fantastic use of Zerglings with good upgrades. Great Dark Swarm play. Good Defiler stuff in there. No Plague, just Dark Swarm. Which was alright. And then the Ultras were just so hard to take down for Mini. He hit Mini when he was vulnerable, right? Mini was not ready for them. He got completely taken by surprise, it feels like. And just went into Archons because that's all he could do. Beautiful. Really, really good stuff. And that's going to be it for me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Rude War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.